Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. start singing this version of the Mass parts next weekend. Next weekend. Thank you.
You little what? You little, you're feeling a little down today? You're feeling a little down today? You say? You're feeling down or you're feeling good? Are you up? Are you, are you feeling good? You're feeling good, okay. Oh, well, I'm sorry. You're feeling good. Vinny, everyone, Vinny is feeling good. So no, don't worry. Yes. Round of applause. He's always feeling good. He's always smiling at me and everything. Well, I hope everyone's doing well. You couldn't have done a better thing at 5 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon than to come to St. Thomas Aquinas and get blessed by the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Of course it is. Where else were you going to be? The bowling alley, the liquor store, sitting in front of television? No, you're here. Isn't that wonderful? I'm so glad to see each and every one of you here. Together, let's take a moment of silence as we remember uh, those on our parish prayer list and those who have died and those mass intentions for this weekend. At this mass, we pray for Sherry Nadu, who is living. The parish welcomers union requires that I ask this, and you know what it is. Well, except for people who don't know what I'm going to ask. A lot of you know what I'm going to ask, but some people don't know what I'm going to ask. And here it comes. Do we have any visitors here today? Any visitors? Yes, right there. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Man, what a, that's wonderful. I love it. Visitors are great. Listen, the offertory today, it's on me. Okay? So don't you worry about it. Don't you put a penny in there. I got you. All right. Anybody else? Who we got? Raise your hand high. Raise your hand high. I can't see anybody. Where is it? Monsignor Stack. Yes. Yeah. There's a young lady back here who came to visit from the Holy Land. From the Holy Land? Wow, yeah, all the way Orlando. from Texas. Oh, oh, the Holy Land, Israel. My bad, my bad, I'm sorry. Wow, well, welcome back. How was it? Was it good? Did you get some falafel? Well, she's going to school down there. Oh, is that right? Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Oh, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, I started out in Kentucky and came to her senses and went to Florida. <laughs> they don't have an ark in Israel. They got, a, they got a full-size ark in Kentucky, as I understand, so. Great, thank you very much for coming. Anybody else? I can't see people over there, so yell out or something. How about this? Anybody returning after a period of time? You haven't been here in a while? You haven't been here in a while, and here you are. Perhaps you got your vaccines. Perhaps you've been participating online. Anybody? No, the rest of us are all family. Well, that is terrific. That is terrific. Please keep our question of the week in mind as we listen to God's word in today's reading. Consider the four ways Jesus is truly present at the banquet, in the Word, in the Eucharist, in the assembly, and in the priest presider. Reflect on how privileged we are to participate in the Mass. I totally believe that. We are, we are privileged. It's a privilege for me to be here, to see you all there. It's fantastic. All right, last, I'll do it one more time. Consider the four ways Jesus is truly present at the banquet, in the Word, in the Eucharist, in the assembly, and in the priest to presider, reflect on how privileged we are to participate in the Mass. All right, so now that there are, sort of no, there are no strangers among us, please stand up, turn to the person next to you, and tell them how good they look. Looking good, looking good. Doesn't Come to the feast of heaven and earth, 
Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. You want a third verse? He wants that third verse. Okay. Why he print it? My bread will never sustain you in days of sorrow and woe. My wine will flow like a sea of gladness to flood the depths of my soul. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Celebrate the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi. It's a grand feast. Many places have a big procession, parades, all that sort of stuff. Maybe we'll do that next year when things have calmed down a little with the COVID. Our Lord God, we believe, gives himself to us in the sacrament of the altar. And he gives it to us that we may become what we receive and take that body of Christ out into the world to be the leaven that he calls us to be. So we enter into these sacred mysteries that us call to mind the sin that gets in our way and ask Almighty God again for help. Lord Jesus, bread of life, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, Lord mercy. have mercy. Lord Jesus, cup of salvation, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, harvest and thanksgiving, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, all that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. 
For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is a mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. I propose to you that this, and not Christmas, is the most wonderful time of the year. <coughs> this is the time of graduations, and historically the time of weddings, the time of first communions. These are beginning times. Isn't graduation called commencement? Uh, this Feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ, celebrates the commencement of our being called to be the body and blood of Christ. I have a cousin in Buffalo, I refer to her from time to time, actually Grand Island, for those of you who are familiar with the territory. She has twin boys. They never left home until they married. Their house uh, 
used to be, uh, they used to have renters, and so the boys occupied by the renter's place. Of course, unless they were hungry, then all of a sudden they were home again. Uh, one of her boys, as he prepared for marriage, bought himself a house, and he called his mother one day astonished. He said, do you really have to pay for cable TV? <laughs> Hard to say how he missed that piece growing up, but he had. He was quickly introduced to all sorts of the harsh realities of life, mortgage, utilities, groceries, homeowners insurance, and on and on. Through the grace of God and his parents' support, he was mature enough to step up, but it was a little like the ice bucket challenge for him. The coming of age of those twin boys, they're growing into the role of adults, husbands, fathers, is for me a fitting paradigm that we celebrate in this wonderful mystery of the Eucharist, the mystery that we honor in a special way on this feast of the body and blood of Christ. I took my little car into the Hyundai dealership the other day to have it serviced. While there, being a compulsive shopper, I wanted to take a look at the newer model of the same car I have, and maybe a few others, see what they cost. They have new features. Of course, most of you are aware of this, because if, even if you bought a car the age of mine, if you bought one that didn't cost uh, as little as this one costs, you have backup camera. I think that's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing. Now they got this, these beepers, you know, that if you if you get out of your lane a little bit, it'll either shudder or beep, and if the car gets close to you, it beeps. If you get too close to the one in front of you, it beeps. Have mercy, if you're a bad driver, you'd be listening to beeps all the time. <laughs> but I'm thinking that those things are a little bit like parents' advice, teachers' advice, friends' advice. They tell us when we're getting a little too close in front or behind or beside, when there's danger. They're present to us. Our gracious Lord gives us a church, a community, to which in front, to watch in front, beside, behind us. He gives us his own body and blood to nourish us and to constantly remind us that he is with us as well to nourish and to guide us. If you saw the 2015 film, The Martian, you saw an example of how frightening it could be to be completely alone. With the Eucharist and within this body of believers, we're never alone. I had lunch with a friend this past week who's all excited to tell me that his son is getting married. We've talked before of how proud he is of his children and what a pleasure it has been to see them grow up. Uh, grow into the fullness of adulthood, if you will. He was beaming with joy over the prospect of this young man marrying, establishing a family, and it's something that's brought him so much joy. I think that it gives Christ the same kind of joy when we receive his body and blood and by his grace enabled to be his body and blood present in the world. As I preach to you over and over and over, when we gather for Mass and when we behold Christ physically present in our midst in communion, the celebration of the Eucharist is only halfway done because we receive the body of Christ in order to become the body of Christ. And then we must take that incarnate Christ out into the world for the sake of the world. The Feast of Corpus Christi is the feast of our identity. Who are we? Well, we're Christ's delegates, nourished by him, charged by him to make him present in Alpharetta, here in Georgia, here in USA, here in all of the Americas, here in the whole world. It's a big task. Now let me step just a moment into the minefield of politics one of my favorite places to go. If you're gonna be the body of Christ in the world, you're gonna to have to get into the fray. There is no choice. Politics is the name that we give to how a diverse group decides how to act. You will never hear me call politics dirty. 
Politics is just the way groups make decisions, but I believe it is our obligation as Christians to be involved actively in that decision making. St. Mick Jagger tells us you can't always get what you want, but you can be sure you won't get what you want if you don't get in the game. It's something we have to do for Christ's sake. Who's going to bring Christ into local governance? Well, you are. Who's going to bring Christ into state government? Well, you are. Who's going to bring, bring Christ into national government? You are. If you feel Christ is not present in the actions of your government, it's your fault. Step up. We're in the process of recreating our faith formation ministry. We have more than 2,000 children between preschool and high school graduation age. Who will bring them to Christ and who will bring Christ to them? You will. It's my job to help you do your job, and I will do everything I possibly can to help you with that task to be able to bring all the resources of this parish to muster so that our children can grow into the fullness of Christ. When we receive communion, the minister presents the host to you, saying, almost as if it were a question, body of Christ? Are you willing to become the body of Christ present in the world? And each of us responds, amen. So be it. Just as Mary replied, let it be done to me according to your word. And so, are you willing to be Christ present in the world? Amen. Amen. Will all those who serve as sacristans or extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion in our parish and those who bring communion to the sick and homebound, please stand. Dear friends in Christ, our brothers and sisters are entrusted with administering communion at the parish, with taking communion to the sick and the homebound, with giving communion to the dying. On this solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, let us recognize these servants of the Lord with a prayer blessing. Merciful God, you place in the hands of your disciples the food of life. Bless our brothers and sisters. May they faithfully give the bread of life and the cup of salvation to your holy people. Nourish us all at your holy table that we may bear Christ to others and share with them the gifts we've so richly received. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand with me. I believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made, who for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious body. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to Prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
the life of the world to come. Before we bring our gifts to the altar for the blessing and breaking of bread, let us ask God's blessing upon all people. For the people of God who gather around this table week after week for lives broken in humble service and poured out, we pray, O Lord, Lord, make us bread for others. O Lord, 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 make make us us bread for others. For those living in the midst of famine or drought, for those who will pass who will today pass through soup kitchens and shelters, for all who will go to bed hungry this night. We pray, O Lord, make make us bread bread for others. For those who prepare our young people to share in the Eucharist, for those who bring Holy Communion to our sick and homebound parishioners, we pray, O Lord, make us bread for others. For farmers who grow wheat and harvest grapes, for favorable weather and just wages, for all who work to put food on our tables, we pray, O Lord, make us a bread for others. For patience and consolation to those who suffer long-term illness or are recovering from surgery, for the safe and just treatment of the elderly in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, and for our deceased relatives and friends, we pray, O Lord, make us bread for others. Gracious God, giver and nurturer of all life, you provide for all our needs, giving even of yourself in the body and blood of your Son, Jesus. Hear our prayers that in feasting at this table, we might know your love and bear it to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. As is our custom at St. Thomas Aquinas, our collection will now be taken at this time. The first basket to pass your seat will be for parish support. The second basket is for our second collection, which today is for the maintenance of the parish. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, hounded by the world, bounded by the world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song of adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end we acclaim. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas Aquinas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, with Gregory John our Bishop, Joel and Bernard as auxiliaries, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
I don't know how much you all are motivated by music like I am, but stopping that last hymn after one verse is like having one bite of ice cream. <laughs> can, can we knock out at least another couple verses? Your ancestors it manna in the desert, but this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by a reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Just a few announcements. All high schoolers, including rising ninth graders, are invited to our summer Bible study don't miss out on the great opportunity to grow in faith and community. Join us on Wednesdays starting this week, June 9th at 7 p.m. upstairs in the Faith Formation Building. All singers ages 9 to 15 are invited to a summer choir camp at St. Thomas Aquinas. This three-day camp will be in preparation for singing at the 5 p.m. Vigil Mass on July 24th. There's more information in the bulletin if you're interested. We had a great time at our first concert of the summer. Join us for our next concert on Friday, June 18th with our Hispanic ensembles. There's also more information on the bulletin, in the bulletin on that. And I would be remiss if I didn't wish Monsignor Dan a happy anniversary on his 39th anniversary of his priestly ordination. Our question of the week, as Eric read before Mass, is this. Consider the four ways that Jesus is truly present at the banquet, in the Word, in the Eucharist, within the assembly, and the presider. Reflect on how privileged we are to participate in the Mass. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, sing a true tree.